sync audio. Here we go. For a super tight nettle wheel. And I say nettle, it kind of feels nettle. I've been doing loads of riding on the X20S, of course. And so this one feels substantially smaller when, in terms of battery size, it isn't at all. It is 3,600 watt hours of pure power. So the range should be good, but of course, no suspension. Wow, this tire is noisy. No, 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 noisy. I'm going to take it fairly steady on this road. Just because this is all new, stepping off the EX20S. Straight onto this beast. It's supposed to be a brilliant wheel. It's supposed to be an absolutely brilliant wheel. Someone's just pulled right out in front of me because they love it. Basically, just saw me come in and went, nah, you're all right. Uh, just, yeah, just take my time. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, boys. I'll just pull out. Okay, let's give it a go. Woo! So, plenty of little punch in it. Feeling good, to be honest. Feeling very good. Interestingly, this tire, traveling off-road, is, is cushioning it really nicely. It's almost like it has suspension. Not quite, but also it's substantially lighter than the EX20S. Who would have thought these sorts of things were light wheels? So braking, braking, braking. That feels all right to me. So got a screen on top, which is looking pretty awesome. Yeah, it's all right. It's sunny now. I can see it just it's not super super bright and super clear in sunny weather be a criticism i suppose if i take a quick look down i can see the speed readout fairly efficiently so that's pretty cool yeah it's not quite the same as suspension it's sort of middling the tire is a bit balloony so it's uh, helps take some of that whip out but it's, yeah it's not the same as suspension it's not the same as the x20s that i've been used to has got a mudguard out of the box. Fair play to him. Let's try a bit of that pilling. Ooh. So I'm currently, as you may notice, wow, it's been a lot of rain full coming down here. It's worn away the trail. Uh, as you may notice, I haven't got the side pads on. I brought this back today to do this test. Uh, last time this was used, and it was the first time it was used, was with the 200 miles in 12 hours. It was one of the machines we used because of its battery size and its range capabilities on that. And I hadn't read it, jo ridden it. Jonathan rode it on that and I hadn't ridden it at all. It's brand new. This is the first time I've been able to get out there and give it a go. So it has done that. We did, I think it did two loops of that 45 mile circuit pretty much flat out entire way so there's a spoiler we know it definitely does 45 miles per charge that's got to be a given I wonder if I can ruin that by uh, hammering it like I do but it's been ridden with no side pads on and I've just charged it back up from those excursions and it's taken most of the day and now I'm heading out and guess what I didn't bring with me side pads so I can, at least I can report back riding it with no side pads and then riding it with. They, they look pretty nice, pretty meaty side pads. Uh, they're going to make a huge difference in terms of delivery, power delivery. But it's, this is feeling, I mean, it's, it's not lacking in its acceleration and its braking without the side pads on, which is a, a good thing because it's only going to benefit with them fitted. I feel a bit spongy on the, if I give it some hard lean, sort of, got a bit of give I think it might be set up on soft on the app so if you're brand new to this you usually have an accompanying app 
depending on which the manufacturer is, but usually you do. And within there, usually, you can set your how you want your foot plates to be. And so you can have it set hard, so it's like solid. And when you stand on it, it just moves. Or you can have a bit more forgiving, set up slightly softer. So having a mud guard in the box, hooray! That's the exact thing everyone's looking for. Especially if you live in the UK or anywhere along that line of the globe. You are gonna get rain. And with rain comes puddles and mud. And so it seems almost unbelievable that it's taken this many years for manufacturers to start actually putting in a mud guard rather than having to charge out another 30, 40 quid for one or having to 3D print one. Having one you just clip on. Brilliant. And it works tremendously. Right, we've got a walker, so I'll slow it right down. Boom. Oh yeah. See, courteous riding go a long way. If you hoon it around these places, even though there's hardly any population, it just gets a bad name. Well, it's gripping really, really well. Got no complaints there. It, it's just soldiers along quite nicely. It, it doesn't feel particularly heavy, I have to say. And the trouble is I have come from the X20S, so um, that's, if you don't know already, go and check out the review. I'll link it up now and below. Um, it's, a, it's a heavy beast, but obviously a lot of that weight's to do with the uh, suspension unit and its machinery around that. Um, so this feels quite nimble. I think it's aided by the bigger foot plates. So it's got quite large foot plates. Let's just slow it right down and have a quick check a second. So yeah, the the foot, yep. So you can lift up, run it one-legged. Uh, they're not spike spikes. There's spikes in the foot plates. They're not as aggressive as the X20. There's still spikes though, which if I try and shift my feet, I can really feel that. So there's no grip tape. Of late, manufacturers seem to be getting rid of your grip tape and having spikes instead, which of course, in all weather riding, works out a lot, gives you a lot more traction on your feet. Uh, this can really help, especially bumping, like going down quite, you can't pick it out on camera, but it's quite a steep decline now. And that really does help. The bigger foot plates as well give you a huge amount of more torque and control over the wheel. But of course they make it more of a hindrance if you're going to be clonking into stuff all the time through tight trails. But that's very, it's not a very frequent event that I found with the bigger foot plates. I'm not constantly knocking them. Um, and what tends to be the case as far as I can see is the, the, the foot plates are a bit higher in these sorts of models. So it sort of negates the problem really. Um, yeah, I've had no issues. I mean, this thing is just flying along. No complaints from me at this point. This is uh, pretty nice. And that tyre, I just love this tyre, same as a Sherman type tyre. It's just, it just grips. It's just pleasant, very pleasant. You got the weight of all those battery packs stacked into this wheel, very dense, pushing down on a knobbly tyre. Trails like this, just gripping boys, just absolutely gripping. I'm just doing a quick, sort of about, think about 10 miler, just to settle into this machine. And then I'm gonna take it out on the range test to see how she performs. We shall see. As I say, I should, would expect 45 miles at least, because we did that with our 200 miler in 12 hours. Uh, I'm not sure what state of charge was when we were getting back, but it should at least do that. Uh, we've got speakers on the back. We have got sort of like running lights as a rear light, uh, along with brake when you lean back. And then we've got a dual front headlight, so it should be plenty bright enough. What I do like about the way they've done this is the lift handle front and back just enables you to grab it. It's a bit like a cage on the Sherman, except for it's not a roll cage, it's built into the body. So it makes it a bit narrower, a bit smaller, makes the so that's sort of the whole outline of the machine slightly tighter in terms of design. That works well. I've lifted the car already. And again, harking back to the X20S, I don't despise putting it in a car. And it doesn't make me feel sick. 
So that's good. I don't get a hernia from it. We're actually heading into the season now where we're going to get more rain and colder weather. What a shame, eh? Summer's whizzed away. And we're heading into winter. The issue with not having suspension, for me, is when I'm not looking. So I just looked up there just very briefly and sort of relaxed and I hit something and it went straight into my back like that, sort of made me kick back a little bit. It's like, oh, and that's where my back problems come from. It's not per se the design of the machines. It's concentration levels. You can't almost let off, if you're traveling at speed, like I'm currently, you can't just let off and have a look around. You actually have to be really on it in case you hit something. Let's go over these two logs here. No problem at all. Lovely. Yeah, it's feeling absolutely fine currently. New issues. Uh, pulls like a freight train. And that's with no pads on. No power pads on it at all. We'll try a bit of a climb in a minute. See if we get on with zero paddage with a steep climb. And I can report back to you, can I? Right here. Get the old drone out. Can I see what's happening? No. I'll do it all upside down. Neither of the zips do up. That's awkward. Maybe that's not going to work. Oh, updating beacon. Okay, that's doing a firmware update in the middle of all this. Let me get me phone out. Skydio. It's never quite like you see in the uh, commercials. Connect. Let me go to... Oh, it's updating the beacon. All right, I've got to wait now until that beacon's updated. Beacon, there it is. Let's connect to the beacon. And then connect to the Skydio. The beacon, for some reason, is not working. Oh, no, it sent an email. Because it says, enter the code you received. Oh, pants. Okay. Oh, please work. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Oh, give me a signal. Come on. Uh, nothing at the moment. Uh, I can't use the drone without that code. Which is really disappointing. Uh, maybe we won't be filming this then. Oh, Skydio code. There we go. Oh, so annoying. Invalid code. Okay, has he got a second code? 363205. 363205. I've entered that code. Oh, it's an off loan. Off loan? Offline mode at the moment. Let's kill the email client and reopen it. Shoot, let's just put it all down. Not holding that any longer. Pointless. Totally pointless. What a waste of life this is. Does my head in. Such a waste of time. Such a fat waste of time. Let's just launch this. I don't want to wait for the beacon. Let's try and take advantage of this actually working. Whoa, off she goes. Right, come with me. Finally, on a journey we can both enjoy. Wow, this is super stony. Super stony. And steep. Well, with no pads on, it's not causing me any issues to climb up here. It's not really burning into my calf muscles too much. It feels okay to me. Feels okay to me. It's super bumpy. You just won't pick it up on camera at all, but it is rubbish ground. Digged up by uh, excavators, of course. Okay. Let's get going down this trail. Right, well, the handle's fine. Super bumpy ground, but she's handling a dream. A dream! Bend your knees, job done in it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is so bumpy. Oh. Bend your knees, boys, bend your knees. Unless you want to lose them. It's a good uh, slogan, isn't it? Bend your knees, unless you want to lose them.
as you can see, sort of the panels are actually partially see-through because that's actually the board inside. The LEDs on the board inside showing through. So you can see that in real shaded environment. Worth noting, look, you've just lost the R off Commander. So it's Command, Command A now on the top part there. It reminds me of the Gen 3 Monster where you sort of really didn't keep the Monster logo because it came off. But the other, all the other ones are intact. It's just that one. I suspect my leg's rubbing against that slightly and it's taken the R off, so, yeah. So we're on this range test, coming to the tail end of the range test. And having had the pads on now, for basically all the range test, yeah, it takes some conditioning on the part of your calf muscles, for sure. So I've got nice soft calf muscles because obviously you don't usually have pressure against them. And these pads in the position where I can lean forward and get good use of the front of the pads because they can't be split. As in like front bits of pads and rear bits of pads. Then you end up having to choose the optimum for your acceleration and for your braking. So, and obviously there's no real sweet spot, you're trying to find it. So where the pads for me personally are for best use of getting them for acceleration, they're digging into my calves slightly, which I think is just conditioning, just like you used to get with the side pads in terms of standard ones. When you first start riding, it's touching a part of your leg that obviously you wouldn't usually put in, be putting pressure on. Um, but I can tell you now, they're really aching for me because it's the first time ever I've had that contact against my, my calf muscle. All right, we've got a bit of a steep incline now, going straight up there. You can't tell it's steep, but there's some real big rocky outcrops. Let's just see what it's like. We're on about 20% battery. We'll see if it just cuts out because it's required so much so much uh, torque required to get my fat ass up here. Oh, it's beeped at me, look. Oh. That is... Didn't cut out, though. Despite that huge amount of amps required. Cool. We're good to go again. Well, the fun is over. It's tilted me back now considerably. I could still ride, I could probably do another mile. Maybe, maybe two more miles, something like that. Um, but very, very slowly. So I've got some get me home miles left, but not enjoyable to ride. So see what the mileage is. The Commander has been exceptional from unboxing to the range test. In terms of power delivery, I was really impressed by the pull power up long sweeping hills around my area, having ridden loads of wheels up that very hill. Um, I feel a noticeable difference in terms of just the available power on tap, just to push forward, especially with the power pads fitted. Just being able to just zoom up that hill, no issue at all, no worries, didn't even flinch at it at a good speed, good solid speed, keeping with traffic, etc. Worked really, really well. I was pleasantly surprised with the mileage from this wheel. Basically 50 miles, and I say I could probably do another couple, and that 50 miles was hammering it. So, you know, we always try and get the minimum amount of mileage out of a wheel. So everybody else should be well pleased with this. A majority of it was done on road. So I'd probably say it was something like a 60-40 split, um, 60 on road, 40 off, maybe a little bit different, maybe 70-30, 70 on road, something that's around that figure anyway. So it has been pretty quick, uh, trying to get the mileage done as quick as possible. 
and it served really really well I found with the side pads and the spiked foot plates uh, although it's not aggressive spike as other foot plates they didn't slip at all uh, did ride through some rain so we had uh, an instance of a, a downpour rode through that no problem at all didn't affect the screen at all uh, the charge ports with a rubber cover because it's sort of exposed uh, it acts as a bit of a hood so it got nothing in there there was no water or anything in there uh, the mud guard worked a treat for dust and for rain headlights have performed brilliantly no issues whatsoever and the inbuilt sort of part of the body the uh, handles at the top although if you're used to a single handle you might be not so keen on this design but due to the weight of this wheel of course you kind of really do need to pick it up with two hands you can pick it up with one hand um, but of course the handle isn't in the middle as you might be used to it's front and back of the wheel so you sort of pick it up side on kind of thing um, but I've had no issues with that and I found it actually more helpful than a hindrance the actual tire is really noisy on the road I know a lot of people have been swapping out for a street tire um, but for me personally with that mixture of on and off road it's something that I prefer and I actually quite like the road noise um, one, I think it sounds awesome, but secondly, for people who are walking around, obviously you're on a fairly silent little vehicle, um, so having that noise, people can hear you coming, um, and then on the off-road, of course, it performs brilliantly, and you'll find, uh, it's a quite common question, people say, can you swap out the tyre for me? You very often find, after 50 to 100 miles, that tyre is really worn in, and you get a nice round edge to it. Now, obviously, it isn't the perfect road tyre, um, it's heavily more pointed towards the off-road side of things than it is road just by its very nature so yes can you get a better road tire for it absolutely can but actually I've not found it lacking in any of the areas even with the pushing it especially for this test in cornering and stuff like that I've had no issues with it so for me it's not something I would go to the great length of stripping the unit apart when it's brand new um, just to replace the tire out. Uh, if I was going to do it at all, I'd probably just use it until the tire had worn out and then when it needed replacement, replace it. So I've not tested the speakers at all. The speakers on the back, I'm not interested in those, uh, so I'll bother testing them. They're usually very good. Uh, they sort of boost the sound out really nicely and I suspect they are. They're probably stonkingly loud. Um, fun for doing all sorts of silly things with them. But as an actual... Uh, usage case for them I don't use them others will the lights um, work perfectly well in terms of the side lights the decorative lights uh, what I usually do is I'll run them at white on the sides of the front so they almost complement the headlight gives you a bit more depth to the wheel for when people see you come in they kind of work out how, how wide you are from those lights um, and the rear lights have worked perfectly as well the braking etc so all those things have worked really really well so overall, I'm really, really happy with this wheel and I'll come back and do a review at 250 kilometer mark and then 650, then 1,000, just to see if this wheel is reliable, etc. But at the moment, I'm really impressed with it. You get huge mileage out of it. It's a real compact, tight unit. Uh, fairly heavy, but not as much as the X20S in terms of putting it in and out of the car. So from that point of view, um, it's been fine. So I think... It will suit a broad range of riders. Um, if you definitely want suspension, obviously this hasn't got it. Uh, I found it not lacking and to report back a week or so later, I didn't get any back problems from this. So that tire has really soaked up a lot of it. Um, so yeah, some things to consider, but I'm hoping that this, this video has been helpful to you. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I've got nothing to bad about to say about this wheel. It's so on, on point, just like the Sherman Veteran. Um, yeah, no issues whatsoever so far, but I'll keep reporting back. But don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below because apparently it's really good for the algorithm or something to do that. Um, so, yeah, I will see you guys on the next one.